that's always satisfying. Hello, hello, hello. I am a painter dog and welcome back to another episode of our Timberborn Let's Play series. I hope you're having a lovely day. My day is actually quite good, thanks. Now, since the last episode, I did quite a bit of work. Our bots are up and running. As you can see, we have 150 now. I converted this over to be run by bots. They work 24 seven. These are run by bots. These are, these are, the farms are also, as well as I also have placed in a dirt excavator. And uh, let me just get this on silent. And then I did a bit of work on this side as well. These smelters are all bots. And then I added in a couple of gear factories and a lumber mill. I had to reroute the power through here. So we can have enough. As you can see we are producing about 5,300. We are only needing 2,800. So uh, I placed this in here. I've got a couple more scavengers. Because we have 26 beavers just sitting around. And uh, we can get a couple more lumber mills in here. Our uh, log situation is a bit on the low side. But we can sort that out. And then I extended a couple of areas for forestry. And I demolished a bit of landscape here. So we can get those planted up. Added in some more storage for potatoes as you can see down there and a couple more farms over there foresters are mostly over to pots as well and uh, also adding this i extended the dams a bit, a bit of landscaping and got a couple more dams in what i also did was i expanded this let's go down I took that bit out there as well, that landscape there. I always go to these two build up, but at this stage uh, we are fine. Oh, we might as well just get them built. So they are done. And these smelters are also over to bots, adding a couple more hauling posts. I'm going to leave my haulers as beavers. And uh, I added in another bad wood pump right there, add it in the medium tank, or oh, that was already there, add it in the centrifuge here. The power usually can keep up, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I tried to get a couple gears, metal blocks and planks over here so we can get these two in, but so we can get those imme built immediately, but you know, that's fine. Add it in two large water tanks for bad water, just so we can keep these running. And uh, I added in a couple more lumber mills and a couple more gear workshops there. I also went ahead and I built up the two mines. But I set these for science points. Every hour I get 20 signs and with the observatory in here, every 0.75 hours I get 10. So yeah, that can, that can work for us. I built this one up as well and I also did that for science points at this stage. This one I set up so we can get metal from it. I have scrap metal there, so we can get in there, and then gears and printed blacks that they use in the mine. I added in this water pump, if this floods over that we can pump it, pump it out, and then add one of us up because we didn't have it issues there. Did a bit of landscaping here as well, and I added in a couple of floodgates just to get the bad water out and if you want to dam up a bit of bad water we can always do that in here add it in stream gauges i did add in two mods as far as i know one for vertical power and uh, oh yeah and one for ladders and then one to automate floodgates so let me start at the beginning where water comes in so when it, let me get to one of those set the bad one up okay so it's working on this stream gauge here so if it's the contamination is below one percent it will be completely down and that's automatically synchronized with adjacent flood gates 
And if contamination is 1% here, this will go up to 2. But these ones, I did the reverse. If contamination is 1%, it's up to 3 levels. And if it's more than 1%, it go down, goes down. This one is synchronized to that, and automatically floodgates are all synchronized in a row. I did something similar with this side. If it's 1%, and then it's at the 1.5 so water slowly trickles through here and if it's over one percent then it's set to maximum height i didn't do the same with these ones but i did something with this one i'm still trying to figure that out with the timers but yeah we'll see how that goes and with this one i also set up Yeah, I set uh, I set this one up as well. If it's uh, less than one percent, it's totally down. If it's higher than that, it's three levels. So I did that all throughout here, and then I placed in the dams here first, and then floodgates. And I synchronized these ones to that, and this floodgate, like these floodgates down here, I synchronized with added this stream gauge. So as soon as this contamination is picked up these ones will open and as soon as there's no contamination there they will close i also added in a couple of scavenger flags here so we can get all these sorted out so we can get this sorted and uh yeah i think that and i added in biofuel for the bots i didn't need catalyst i need biofuel but yeah that's fine we can always get that sorted out i added in another house here and a triple lodge just to make sure that we can get our beaver sticking over. Hopefully that will work. Okay, so that's basically everything I did. And then automatically did a bit of work there. In here, I want to get our power situation sorted out. As you can see here, we need 2050 and we're only producing about 960. So I want to get a couple more water wheels in. But for that, I want to add in... I want to land do a bit of landscaping here. So I got these that we can use. Uh, let's get down there. Uh, let's get down there. Oh, I won't, wouldn't need to do that. Demolish. So uh, what basically what's going to happen is I'm going to place up or place in a couple of rain blocks in here as well and in here just to get this higher up but i first want to demolish or take this landscape down then i'm gonna go there's basically four wheels of four rows of double wheels here and then we will turn a corner and then four more row, rows of double wheels and then turn we do that a couple of times just to see if we can get there. I have, might have to do a bit of work with more terrain blocks in here to raise the water so it flows better around the corners or something like that. But we'll see when we get there. For now, I think this will work for us. So I'm going to go ahead and demolish or detonate that. And uh, as soon as there's no beavers standing on this we can always get this demolished or detonated so uh, yeah that's what we'll be doing now getting this sorted out hopefully all our beavers can get to where they need to be so yeah this will be for all two double wheels four in a row and then we'll have to go down here. Let's do a bit of the landscaping here. You know what? No. So we can sort that out later. As soon as we get the wheels in. But for now, I think that will do. Let's get a air case going down there. But I'm going to do this 
also placed in this so hopefully this will get built sooner rather than later but yeah I want to get this created and uh, maybe if four water wheels in here and get the power routed everywhere that we need to go and then we can do a bit more work but I'll see you later as you can see I did a bit of work and uh, valves are installed and uh, currently we are in drought so uh, I took the liberty of finishing off of everything and uh, this is the setup that we have now water will throw through here this is not the optimum setup for this but I can adjust that later and the same on the other end but water bad water will throw down here and then if we go up there through here down 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 and then with the last two and this is not optimized so uh, yeah that's not the best and don't mind this I did a bit of work and I had the same setup here with double water wheels but then I thought to myself it's they're not spinning as fast as they could and in this row was only single and each water wheel produced more than the competitors two wheels combined so yeah I thought about doing that this is not optimized at all and so yeah that's something we, we can work towards again and as you just heard the drought just finished so let's speed this up and let's see how everything goes I'm still I missed a bit here that I need to connect up and I've placed in uh, not at every point for instance there's a intersection connection down there I didn't connect up every single one of these but in here there's one I think it's down here and then down here is another one just to spread the electricity so if uh, I missed anything then we don't miss the entire row because, because initially I only had it first water wheels and let's take this one for instance first row and it would connect up here but I didn't have connections up to this whole system that I can still streamline but yeah let's see how this goes obviously we can rework this and if we want to we can expand this more to this side and rip this out expand it more to that side I think this side would be easier and f you know a bit faster as well so we can still build up a couple of gravity batteries but uh, for now as long as there's not a drought we'll be fine if it's the iron thief, the iron thief really works well with this because you have the option of keeping the valves open during a drought so then you don't have any issues it will constantly flow but yeah to work around that you can get gravity batteries for that bit or you can create a reservoir downstream to collect it and then pump it up to top so then you will get more than the two combined sources and have this overflow system as well so then you can really maximize the amount of power you can get out of this and you have some sort of a uh, bit of a backup for when the droughts hit but for now I think this will work for now for us we can always because this system is separate from this system and then the one down at south of the colony is separate I can always try and link these up this one won't be too bad I can just get uh, electricity step ups here connect up there so then this can be integrated into this whole system yeah here you can see the bad water is starting to overflow and here our water wheels go another thing why I say the iron teeth are more optimized for this type of system because we have the larger water wheels if that's a problem now I know exactly what's happening here with all of these interconnections here with a step down it creates issues that it flows down there so the way to combat that is instead of having it single wide to have it at least double wide in here so when you get it step up a uh, step down so you get a normal connection here and then you at the back of it you step down you don't have this issue because here you can see water wheels are starting to slow down and it's not really that efficient but we're still getting about 8,000 horsepower that's still going up so we'll see Okay, there it stabilizes around 8,000 and now it's going down again. So that's something that we can do. We can 
play around with that and as soon as we step down make this double white we're going to lose a couple of water wheels but then we can always instead of starting down here we can always push it up a little bit yes but then we'll have to rework this entire thing again so we'll just see first at, at this stage this is still sufficient around seven and a half thousand hp we'll keep an eye light on that this thing stabilize and then we can see what happens there I should actually have taken this time to get these scrap metal deposits but I was so focused on getting this done and now it's not as efficient as I thought it would be but eh, that's fine we can still work around that but that's something that we can do because as I said I placed this this entire system was placed in and it gave the same productivity as these combos and uh, yeah that or it was the same setup as this but then I saw that these two gave more high output you can see their power output 218 this one is 140 and 78 so yeah that's yeah, doing about the same so that's not really an issue but then we can rework this other way that we might be able to do it now but that's a bit more of a hassle so for instance with this step if you take a look here these two water wheel rows are higher than these two so if we add in another wall here and have a straight connection to show you at this stage we have intersections here these normal four-way intersections so if we do something like this going straight through and then the wall on this side we have a step down then we won't have any water spilling from the top to the bottom so that will be the way to go yes let's uh we can always rework that you can see actually where it will go down because i missed the step down right here so water might be able to flow down there get up to the right. now we have a lot of connectivity to the other side I don't know why I placed in these slot but yeah, I like having all of these areas connected up so yeah that's one thing that we can do I'm really tempted to get this because uh, see we are going down I don't really like that That's set to zero height, so bad water is really flowing down here. But that's a bit of an issue, as you can see in here. Well, bad water is stagnating, so I really need to get this to work. These ones are turning great. These first ones, you can see that each one will produce about 230 horsepower, approximately. Let's round, let's say 225, then we can work out what this group might be able to produce at the end of the day. That's only 6,800, now 7,600, because these ones aren't spurning, it's not really flowing as it's supposed to flow. But yeah, we can sort that out. I might just be tempted to do that. I say quickly, but it will take a while, but yeah, let's see what, what we can do. So, I did a bit of work. I say a bit, but it took me quite a while. And it's actually been six days since I recorded, so uh, yeah, this took quite a while. But I reworked our water turbines here, the water wheels. I also went ahead and did a couple of other things. As you can see, I placed in this area here with floodgates there, and I closed these ones. So I lost power here, but I re reduced power here. It's just a temporary measure. I placed another centrifuge here as a backup for that one. This is stopped. This has stopped. But it's also an extra one. And uh, as you can see here, our water wheels are starting to turn. I'm standing, I'm keeping at a, lo a distance away, otherwise, uh, it might get a bit loud up close. 
but yes there might be some occasional flooding over barriers like this but uh, let's just leave it so it can stabilize and then we can have a look but uh, in the meantime what I did was I took down a couple of trees in here and I, I'm placing in dynamite here I'm gonna take this down maybe to this level maybe a bit lower and I did the same there was a, a hill here I took that down and I'm placing in a bit of landscape in there a little dirt in there so I can lift this up I'm gonna take this down as well there's no need for this to be here to be this high and I can always take it down to this level that's something that I want to do here and uh, future plans for this thing we need to build up a reservoir here for bad water so we can have a little bit more electricity generation when the, the drought comes because we can't keep this open so in, in preparation for that I took this on the other side of these floodgates down to that level I'm gonna demolish these floodgates and uh, yeah we're going to lift this up so uh, that's for later on that we're going to do that in the meantime what I want to do is uh, I'm gonna take all this out I'm gonna square this up or maybe do something a bit more interesting with that but for now just a rectangle here up to about there as you can see there just in line with these water wheels and these floodgates and I'm going to take that down to that level that's basically down there on the inside and then I'm going to build these walls up as high as I can it might not be as high as we can go but we'll, t we'll take a look as we go along and then on this side and maybe on this side I'll just see um, I'm tempted to place a couple of gravity batteries uh, these ones gravity batteries just to make sure that we still have electricity generation let's take a quick peek here we are producing about 13,000 and it's still going up so yeah I did a little bit of tasting it's still about 13,000 and uh, yeah I think that will be great if we wanted to we should uh, have placed an area where we can use mechanical water pumps good pumps to pump it up from this level and pour it back into the reservoir so then you get the output for these two and basically what the output already and then you can get that and just have an overflow on this side just to make sure that you don't overflow your reservoir and spill over your entire colony but we didn't leave enough space here and I don't really want to do it on this side and I can always take out one of these water wheels at the end we are producing around 12,800 to 13,500 with this water we will set up so we can afford to take that out and then we can always place in another row basically in here to substitute that but I think for now that's fine we can leave it like that so yeah that's the plan for the future to get a bad water reservoir up here and uh, because we are going to take out these water pumps and basically these two as well at centrifuge these water wheels this entire area here can rework it i already went ahead and i replaced these bad water pumps as a temporary gap in here and one over there as well with a large bad water tank so yeah that's not too shabby eh I also placed in a couple of areas for lodges in here so yeah that's working quite well I do say so myself take a look here we have 1800 dynamite we have enough extract 4.2k metal blocks scrap metal is on the low side but yeah that's on our mines and our treated planks are quite low and we have started producing books but yeah that's what we are doing at this stage but yeah I'm gonna take this down I'm gonna take this down build this up and we might start work on this in the next episode but 
I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Cheerio.